This couldn't be more different than a start in the middle of Philadelphia. It's an early morning start. The only thing going on right now is a, it's a rooster crowing. That's it. Morning. Good morning. Hey, yeah, John. John, right? Yeah, right. Ready, set, go. I mean, <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That sounds official. I think All right. Got about 10 ish miles or so. I think I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania here. <clears throat> and, uh, All right, so we had our five o'clock start. You can see some sunrise coming up over there somewhere. That little pink glow. Yeah, you can see a sign over there that says Hotel Bethlehem. 5 a.m. start. One of the features of this course is the farm is on top of a, a big hill. Probably like a 500 foot climb. And this is a 300 kilometer ride 300 kilometers ideally i think it's a little more this ride looks like it's about 190 miles and at 190 miles a steep 500 foot climb doesn't sound too appealing but i think that's what's going to happen well it's going to happen whether i walk it or i or i actually bike it i don't know I guess that's what separates the tough guys from, from me. Now there's some light. Try this talking about this ride again. This is called the Water Gap Revisited 300K. And it's actually a couple of different rides going on today. There's a 300 and a 200K. Jim did is doing the 200. He had a problem the last 200 we tried. So he's giving it another whirl. And I'm trying the 300. They share a lot of the same route. <clears throat> and uh, we start the 300K ride started at 5 a.m. The 200K ride starts a little later, starts at seven. <clears throat> and um, we're all going over the Blue Ridge. All right, that's the first of about 20 times or so you're going to hear me say the wrong thing. It's not the Blue Ridge nor the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's Blue Mountain. I say it wrong throughout the whole video. The Blue Ridge Mountains is part of the Appalachians, but it's more uh, further south of Pennsylvania down into uh, southern states, Maryland, and things like that. Um, I'm not going to make a big stink about it, but I consistently say this wrong throughout the whole video. Which is a big, pretty big feature in Pennsylvania. Blue Ridge Mountain goes from Port Jervis at the New York State Boundary with Pennsylvania like 150 miles or something like that to the southwest. And uh, <clears throat> We're all going to go over that ridge, and then we're going to follow the Delaware for quite a while. We're going to follow it uh, basically to the Delaware Water Gap, where the Delaware cuts through the Blue Ridge. And if you're doing a 200K, you cut back. If you're not, 
<clears throat> you keep going up through the Delaware River recreational area almost to Port Jervis cross over the Delaware there and come back along the Delaware and it's a big loop thank you sun's popping now that I can see it's daytime I had to change my my cue sheet over uh, because they're in that little plastic window it's not an easy way to do it while moving so I stop I always feel stupid it's like there must be a better way <clears throat> it seems stupid to worry about 30 seconds of messing with paper but it's little things you know Look at that sun. So what's the game plan? It's 190 miles. And uh, say my game plan is to go slow. These events aren't meant as races and I never ride them as such. <clears throat> just take your time I don't want to blow out my knees blow out my back do anything that's you know not gonna allow me to finish or to be in some sort of agony when I do <laughs> all these little hills will cut you down to size <laughs> we're doing like I think about 12,000 feet the cue sheet says 11 but I don't believe it they're always low the other part of the plan is take it easy on the bike this bike's pretty durable there's a lot of good quality parts on it I think I've maintained it as well as I can I've adjusted my bottom bracket bearings got the old style cup and cone bearings in this thing checked all the brakes checked little bolts i've had problems where i've gotten bit by the bolts before something falls off and you're done but really pick your line and you know stay out of the areas where you suspect road debris could give you a flat on these tires I'm running these thin walled thin tread tires it's a risk right I there's a idea out there that they're faster and all that so I'm doing it but there's a risk of punctures for sure and I've had them last year I had a ride where I had nine flats in a day on tires like these and uh, I don't know why it happened but it's like take it easy on the bike pick your line be smart about it because it was out of shape or slow as I am I'll be much slower if I'm stopping to fix nine flats <laughs> So off in the distance, that horizon, that's the Blue Ridge, I believe. You can see there's a gap right there, a little bump. Maybe you can see it. I think we're going up through that. I think that's Little Gap. spring Blue Mountain Drive guessing this here is the Blue Ridge in front of me 
and behind those trees which you probably can't see very well is a gap I think we're gonna pass through that now you got to be able to see it this ridge this mountain is blue mountain it doesn't look too blue but I guess it does sometimes when the weather's just right a nice big long ridge part of the Appalachians be going up over that in a minute first I'm gonna stop it at the control here's someone who's coming through it How's it going? All right, Henry's pit stop, control one. Made it. Are we the last ones? Yeah. We are the last? Well, that's unfortunate. I just asked someone, are we the last ones? I guess we are. I'm sure I'll, they're gonna be passing me in a second here, but. Oh well, no big deal to be last. Try to not to think too much about it. <laughs> Here's the climb. Starting to see more rocks. Some stuff on the side of the hill. Making my way up this switchback. These cars are at a trailhead of the AT. There it is. Welcome to Carbon County. Now for the reward. The, uh, the lifts going up to the top. Lots of fun. Well, there's the ski slope. Still some snow up there. <laughs> Funny. There's a big long ridge. And three and three quarters miles. Although there's like 12,000 feet of climbing in this thing probably uh, we don't ever get above like 1200 feet uh, that's probably like the highest it will be but Pennsylvania's Ridge and Valley is a lot of that just up and down and up and down and up lots of little short things short and steep <coughs> lots of short and steep climbs skunk cabbage is really popping out down there I think I'm going to be looking at this hill, the Blue Ridge, that is. I'm going to be looking at this Blue Ridge for hours. Do something. Do something interesting, Blue Ridge. Don't just be a 150 mile long, a really neat mountain. Do something really cool. This is the state game lands. They're all numbered. I don't know what one this is, but I don't know what that's like. Like a state park, I guess, in New York. 
Nice riding. So there's all sorts of places where there's a pass in the Blue Ridge. That one is called Wind Gap. We're not going there. Saw signs for it on the drive down, but we're not going over that. The road's wet. It smells like it just rained here. I hadn't seen any forecast for rain. Uh, yeah, there's someone way off in the distance there. Um, so I hope it doesn't rain on me because I didn't bring anything. You're not supposed to not bring anything. That's a sure way to get rain. But I'm hoping we don't have any real rain today. A sprinkling I can stand. I'm wearing all, all of my wool. So that should dry out nicely and keep me warm. But not ready for a downpour. I'm right realizing I'm all dressed in black, aside from this reflective gear. If I took it all off, I'd look like a mine. It's good luck. So our city is out. It's everywhere. I guess I like stone houses. Here we go. I saw the water change in direction on these streams as the, that kind of parallel the road here. They've been flowing south and now they started flowing north. Good indication that things are changing. So, I realized I made a mistake here when I put on my brake just a little bit ago and I got a clunk, clunking sound. <clears throat> And there's something loose back there and the thing that's loose is related to my fenders that aren't on the bike <laughs> i used one of these problem solvers sheldon brown nuts which everybody uses to hold their fenders on and hold their brakes on at the same time and i took the fenders off for this ride because it wasn't calling for any rain and in doing so, I think I've loosened them. Mm -hmm. Loosened the, uh, the bolt that holds it to the seat stay bridge. So when I get to this next control, the gap, I'm gonna do a little tinkering and fix it. I don't think it's a big deal. I probably should stop and fix it right away. But I'm planning to not use the rear brake in the next couple miles. It's not very far. And then I'll I'll do my work at the control in case something bonkers happens and I need help. Maybe somebody will be there. Um, seems like a plan. We'll see how it goes. What a nice little town. I was riding along someone with someone I had caught up to somebody who was ahead of me then I heard that clunk and I was like oops better stop so now I've lost my my partner here There's the Cherry Creek I 
Aha! Control two. The bakery. Hi. Did you get a pie? Did you get some pie? Fast work of this. Is this place on a lot of the rides? Sorry? Is this a traditional stop for the group? I guess because it's nice it's this group. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Somewhere in there, my speed was just dropping. I don't know what was going on. Well, you know, the first, uh, you know, the first. Uh, pitch that you get there you start just resetting your pace i started hard with i, I was chasing you know trunet and, and 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 the tandem with the pat and, and cc oh my god they were going like a no miles up. an hour yeah. yeah that's pointless you only do that once and then you know this is yeah. that's not problem. but I, I had to warm up so i was fine but then I, after a while i said come on please give it give it up give it up yep and then you think you, you go your own pace you know? well, i made that mistake i thought i was gonna die and then and you, you like slow down, it's like, oh, this is better. Yes. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. All right, catch you later. Talk to you later. later. See you at the next one, maybe. Yeah. That's the end of that pie. Yep, that was a pretty easy fix. Had a piece of pie. Yeah, that was a pretty easy fix. It just tighten a little bolt that holds the brake to the bridge and it was fine had a quick mixed berry pie had to have some pie at a pie place and got moving along so we're not actually going through the Delaware water gap where we're instead gonna go north and follow the Delaware. On the way back, we'll kind of enter it, but we're never crossing the Blue Ridge, I don't think. I'm this 300K through the water gap. We're not doing that. We're, we're crossing it somewhere more up near Port Jervis. That's not where we're going, actually, but up near there. All right, so that's 100K done. Um, when I come back through this area, back to the water gap I think I'll have about 200k done probably get a sandwich something to eat up in the next control that pie was good but I probably should have some more drinking some of this energy powder stuff like a meal replacement I don't know how that's gonna work so far so good we'll see The Shawnee Lake. Little dam back there. Another resort. This is the Shawnee Mountain. This is Community Drive. Said there's some barricades, but I didn't see any. Nice 
nice area. Nice woods. This community reminds me of the one in Big Fish, that movie, that Tim Burton movie. Like, what's going to be at the end of this road? This is not a community on Community Drive. So I think this is the Delaware. I've been following it for a little bit here. Kind of neat. That's what cut through the Blue Ridge. At the gap, we're following up to up towards Port Jervis. Oh. That trail was the McDade trail, not the DNL or anything like that. I was saw signs for it before, but I just didn't put two and two together. Look at that! It's pretty cool. I said something a little bit ago about a road reminding me of Big Fish, the movie. I realize, of course it doesn't. Of course it doesn't look like the set of big fish. I guess the thing that's interesting about these rides is like all the super stupid thoughts you think, all the little songs that pop into your head, all these references to all these sorts of other things and go, it just, it's just part of the journey. I don't know why I want to say that. It's just that I don't want anyone to think I don't know what Big Fish is all about. But just these rides, it's just like this whole other level of thinking about them. It's not just, oh look, a road, tree, road, hill. There's a whole other set of experiences that's going on. You can't capture it on film, it's possible. Pretty impossible to cat, capture your inner thoughts, but it, I imagine everyone's got these sorts of things just going on in their head all day. And when you're out here doing nothing, so to, so to speak, <laughs> they just kind of bubble out. It's been lots of up and down, up and down on this ride, but now it's flat. And it's been flat for, I'm going to say, the seven miles I've been on this, this historic National Park Service road, I guess, 209 Milford Road, according to the cue sheet. It's nice. It's nice to be going flat and fast for a second. All right. Making it right here. Cool thing is I've gone down this, I think. I've come from over that direction and come down over this bridge. If it's the bridge I'm thinking about. I did this in the middle of summer. That's not it, is it? Yeah. I think there's a descent that goes over the... At some point, there's a Dingman's Ferry Bridge that goes over the Delaware. I'd, I've crossed that at midnight one night. 
and I had to climb back out to go. I was going to New York City. Kind of an epic trip. This, I'd like to say this looks familiar, but it was dark when I did it, so I don't know. Charge by the spoke? Huh? Do you charge by the spoke? No, you're good. Okay, thank you. into Haynesville. Look at Haynesville. It's not Port Jervis. If you're playing along on the map, the, uh, the fourth controls in Haynesville. More pies at the fourth control. Let's have go. Check it out. Hey. Commenting on the sun. Looks like it's coming out. So I grabbed a muffin, made it on the bike, <clears throat> filled up the water bottles, left a left a gallon for someone who was behind me. I didn't use it all. <clears throat> and got going, ate the muffin on the bike. So, you know, it matters. It makes a little bit of difference when you're slow. <laughs> This road feels like glass and it smells like fresh asphalt. It's a nice change from what we've been riding on. Ask some of these fishermen back here what this river was. It says the big flat river. A bunch of guys out there fishing. Got their nets out. I don't know what they're getting. Didn't see any fish. Pretty stream. Whoa! In a quarter mile, turn left. Whoa. I'll pull over here for a second. See what I can see. I'm climbing what I'm guessing is the Blue Ridge. I was wrong earlier when I said it wasn't. <clears throat> But of course it is, because the Delaware, which is behind me, does cut through it. Of course it does. And my GoPro battery has died here, unexplicably. Yeah, it's down to zero. I gotta get an extra battery. Gotta charge it up for a while, so it might be no videos for a bit. Until I get that charged up. <clears throat> this, this hill is harder than the other 
climb, I think, over the Blue Ridge. A little steeper. One thing's for sure, those are some of the nicest looking ditches I've ever seen. They'll never erode. Must be like a monumental cost to build these ditches. Pretty crazy. I don't think I've ever seen ditches so nice. Long story short, I went through a nice forest along the Delaware. Really beautiful. Went through the uh, the gap, Delaware Water Gap. The phone was or the uh, the GoPro was dead. Battery was dead, so I had to charge it from a battery pack. So you don't get to see that, but honestly, it was kind of nice not to have to film. Give you time to just look around and appreciate what you were seeing, and that was nice. So now I'm leaving Portland. The last 100k. Doing all right. Keeping the controls short. Pull out the low view. I think my, my cleats on my shoes coming loose. I hear some ticking in my foot. So, either my bones are cracking, something's wrong in the shoe. <clears throat> what up, shoe? sure I can do it. They're all full of crud. Or something. Weirdly, they don't seem like they're loose. Nothing seems to move. Maybe it's something in the sole. I don't know. Thought I'd check. Hello. All right, now I'm in Frenchtown. It's the penultimate control. <sighs> Shouldn't be long. Approaching I think we'll... control on right, mule statue, just before intersection. Then take notice. All right, so there's a mule somewhere. Let's take a look. And uh, I see it. <clears throat> and um, I'll probably wrap it up here. Got about 20 miles left and there's that mule their chance to walk my bike across the Delaware to Euler Town Euler Town is the place with the big climb on the 200k how's it going so sorry hi uh, I actually like these walking bridges. It gives you a chance to relax your feet, relax your legs, stretch them out a little. So now I'm gonna wrap it up. That's it. It's getting dark. Probably be dark in about 10 minutes or something. So I'll let you know how it turns out tomorrow. Closing shot of the Delaware River.
That's the next morning. Got a good night's sleep. Woke up by the roosters. Really about the best way you could put together a ride. Not many people stayed here. I think Jim and I were the only people who actually utilized this farmhouse, but it was an amazing asset to be able to get done with a long ride like that and just crash, took a shower and crash was luxurious, I think. The woman who runs the place, I think, just told me that they have in their store fresh bread and butter that they just made and things to check out and eat. I might, I might have to take her up on that. So I said I'd do a little debrief. So I'm here in their little store. I thought I'd take a minute here and say a little bit about what happened after uh, after that uh, the camera died. <clears throat> There's a huge climb up a relatively steep ridge that uh, really started to take the wind out of my sails, but I did it okay. You know. The, I stopped once to check the battery on the GoPro, but I've made it up that okay. And then this uh, forest that went along the, I guess the east side of the river was amazing. With waterfalls cascading off the sides of the, the ridge to the east. Like you couldn't, if I took the GoPro and I tried to film it, it would just be waterfall after waterfall after waterfall. And actually, this I thought that, that's probably not that interesting. As beautiful as it is, <clears throat> once you've seen a few, you know. Then the the ride into um, I guess we went to Portland, had the control there, and my strategy was to just drink in shore, this uh, in shore this drink. I didn't eat much, <clears throat> and it worked. It worked the whole ride. I was felt pretty well fueled. But when we got to Frenchtown, and the last control there, the where I signed off, the the mule control there, I felt okay leaving there. Walked across the bridge to Euler Town, and then headed up over what they call Headquarters Road. And it got dark, and things started to change for me. <clears throat> the ride got, I, I suppose the ride didn't get harder, but it got harder for me because I was in the dark, and I've ridden in the dark, and I like riding in the dark. So this is why it seems kind of remarkable. Like I started to feel very vulnerable out there. All the roads were steep ups and downs, twisty turnies with kind of lousy road conditions, I thought. Or I felt that way. It's probably no different than anything else I rode on, but I started to feel really vulnerable out there. <clears throat> and I rode with uh, Mario, guy uh, from New York, um, for a little while. And well, he left me after a period. It was good to ride with someone for a little while. But, you know, these... I had to really slow down, I guess is what I'm saying. I slowed down a lot, and I felt like I was stuck, like I wasn't making good progress. And it reflects in, in my times when I look at them. It's, you know, my speed dropped a lot. I guess that, that would happen at night, but it, it the internal game going on was really the interesting part here. It was, I was starting to feel... I'll say scared a little bit. It was not scared of not finishing or something like scared of like, this isn't very safe. <laughs> and it was a very weird feeling because I knew I was safe. The ride was fine and my bike was fine. Everything was fine. I just had a very strange sensation. I slowed down a lot and uh, <clears throat> took it very slow coming up the hill to the farm here. Uh, someone, a uh, Dawn, past me. She looked like she had fresh legs compared to me. I was just like dragging my butt up the <laughs> up the uh, 
up the hill. <clears throat> and I finished. And I, and I finished in a good time. I mean, time's not the thing here, but it's notable that it, you know, I did uh, 300K last year in the summer, and it took me, I think, 19 hours. I, I like, had one hour to spare. Whereas this, if I remember, it was, I think I got 17 and a half hours, a lot less time in a much more challenging course. I'll say it felt to me like it was <clears throat> sort of next level compared to the, the New York 300K, the waterfalls ride. <clears throat> so anyway, I might have some more thoughts about it. But uh, when we got back, you know, everybody who had finished was eating in the arena area where we started. It's like a big barn. And uh, had some tables and chairs set up and, you know, just get your brevet card signed. And then had some good sausage and peppers, good food laid out, drinks, took a shower and crashed in that bed. I can't say how great this was to have this farmhouse as a resource or camping, like free camping as a resource to, uh, to participants. So I like this venue for that because a lot of times you end up paying a ton of money to do a ride just in hotels and it gets really expensive and that's one of the things I like about randonneuring is it it doesn't come with a lot of the trappings that <clears throat> you know a lot of other events kind of have it seems to me people have sort of uh, sensibilities in randonneuring to try to do things relatively inexpensively, and this this really helped. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got to say about that wonderful ride. Really enjoyed it. Probably some more processing to do about that <laughs> that feeling I had, but that is part of the experience of these long distance events. As you go through a bunch of thoughts. I kind of alluded to that during the ride, I, you know, things popping up in your head. And that was another thing that popped up in my head, like a, a fear and a, a little vulnerability. But, you know, let's say I pushed through it. That's not quite the word. I, I endured it and then you know, finished and had a, had a wonderful ride. All part of the journey. Anyway, I'm going to grab some of this food. Bye-bye. What you doing, cat? Ooh, good dog. Hi. I heard you all morning. You're pretty loud. <laughs> oh, good dog. Don't you? Is that scratching on your ear? You do. Time to put this horse to bed. <laughs>